So welcome back everybody. So as promised, we've got the Steel 028 AV Wood Boss Chainsaw here. This saw has been uh, not been running for the last two or two and a half years or so, and when it was running, it began to be very difficult to start, and it just would not respond well to the throttle, and it was tough to keep it going. It's obvious it's got some very serious problems in the fuel system somewhere. So we're going to open it up, and we're going to swap out some parts, and we're going to see if we can get it going today. Let's take a closer look at it and see what we're working with. So to give you all a little bit of a closer look, this particular saw is actually a really nice example of a steel wood boss. There's really nothing wrong with it except for, <laughs> except for the fact that it won't run, but of course that's fixable. It seems to still have all the parts. It's got both of the bar nuts on it. Um, it has still got functional chain brake on it. This is one of the later models that featured a chain brake. The saw was introduced originally in 1977. It's got an engine displacement of about 47 cc. None of the plastic on this saw is banged up. It still has good compression. And uh, the only thing wrong with it is it just won't run. Um, like I said, there's nothing broken on it. It's just, it's just dirty. It's just dusty and greasy. It's been sitting on the rack in here for quite some time getting sawdust from the woodworking projects on it. And it just needs cleaning up and fixing. So let's get to it. So I really don't hear anything slosh oh wait there may be something sloshing around in here surely i didn't leave gas in this thing all this time oh yuck i did Ooh, it smells old too Ooh, yeah. well we're gonna have to get that out all right so we got that fuel out of there I, I i was gonna try to see if it would start and maybe possibly adjust the carburetor before we really got into you know trying to replace the carburetor and put new parts in i was going to see if maybe it could be adjusted or cleaned but after seeing that fuel that's been sitting in there for at least two years i'm not going to do that i'm just going to go ahead and take everything off and uh and replace it i mean i've got the parts so you know why not I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm some kind of an expert. I'm going to be taking pictures of this thing so I don't forget where all the parts and pieces go. So let's check out the parts that we've got to fix this saw with. This is just a parts kit that I got off of Amazon. It's basically just a an aftermarket replacement carburetor for the saw and some fuel line and some other stuff. Let's get it open. That right there, that's the that's the quality mark. That's how you know it's good. I got this off of Amazon. It wasn't particularly expensive. It got good reviews, and you know you can always trust Amazon reviews, right? Alright, so it basically just comes with all the essentials. You've got your carburetor. You know, usually, typically the uh, the proper thing to do, or the, the, the traditional thing to do, I guess you could say, would be to rebuild the carburetor entirely uh, from, you know, new diaphragms, take the old one apart and rebuild it. 
I had to replace the carburetor on my four-wheeler probably a year or two ago, and I discovered that it was actually more cost-effective effective to replace the entire carburetor. And this whole kit was not particularly expensive. It was about $17. Of course, I've got a lot of skepticism about a, a spark plug that comes in a kit that costs $17. But the carburetor seems to be built pretty well. Uh, it's heavy. It's solid. Um, you know, just let's just let's just hope it works. Let's uh, let's get this all together. So here's the old Walbro carburetor that came on the saw, and here's the new one that came uh, with the kit. I mean, as you can see, they are pretty much pretty much identical. I, I certainly do hope that they're identical in quality as well. In a minute, after we get this uh, carburetor on the saw and hopefully get it going, I'm going to take this old one apart and check out the diaphragms. And of course, you don't want to get rid of this because it's rebuildable. The old carburetor is always rebuildable and you can have a spare one on hand. That goes on the new one. So this is what came out, the old fuel filter right here. As you can see, it's got a, a piece of weighted uh, metal that goes right here on the end. These two pieces were actually apart. It's held together by this grommet right here. And this grommet is so swollen, or not swollen, it's lost its elasticity, unfortunately. So it just simply does not work anymore to keep that grommet in. So. We're going to replace it with this that came in the new kit. It's actually weighted on the end as well, so that's good. It just keeps it, basically, you know, gravity pulls fuel to the bottom, so something needs to be pulling the fuel filter to the bottom of the fuel so it can keep picking up. So we're going to replace it with this fuel filter that came in the kit. It's actually not a bad-looking fuel filter. I think it'll work, uh, work just fine. It appears this filter is designed to be used with the fuel, um, fuel line that they sent me. Uh, let me see if that's possible. Alright, so this fuel line that they sent will not work because there has to be a rubber grommet right there, otherwise there will not be a seal between the uh, fuel tank and uh, the carburetor compartment here. But I do think that I have an idea to make this work because there's actually nothing wrong with the fuel line that's already on this thing. I just don't feel right about replacing that uh, spark plug with that, chi that Chinese thing that they sent me. So we're going to replace it with the proper plug, a good Bosch plug.
not going to put the cover on yet. We're going to go see if it runs first. So here we go guys, it's the moment of truth. Let's uh, see if we can get it going. There's no primer bulb on this one, so we'll choke it and uh, make sure our chain brake is engaged. I'm sure the carburetor will need some adjusting, but here we go. Not bad.
as promised, let's see if we can dig into this old carburetor and check out these diaphragms in there. See what they look like. Gaskets and diaphragms tend to get hard with age, of course, especially if you leave, leave old fuel in there. There's a fair amount of trash in that one, actually. It's not, well, hang on, let's take it out. Yeah, that's, I know it's tough for y'all to really see it on camera, but that one right there is uh, not particularly soft anymore. Ideally, uh, the purpose of this, this gasket right, this diaphragm right here, is to go up and down and up and down and up and down and actually uh, kind of act like a little pump in there. And it's tough to tell, but it's hard. Uh, you can actually see right here, you see how it's, I hope the camera picks this up. You see how it's shiny right in this area? That's the area that was sandwiched between between this plate right here and uh, the rest of the carburetor. That part, part is shiny. That part is very dull. That part's the part that's been exposed to gasoline. And you can even feel how much softer that is than that. It's very hard. You can hear that. So guys, that's all I've got for this video. I'm extremely happy with the way that that turned out. This saw has not run that well in, well, of course it hadn't run at all in two years, but I don't know how well it was running even before that. It's running excellent now, practically like a brand new one, and it was uh, you know minimal time and minimal effort and minimal money uh, invested in it. Now, as far as the money thing goes, I'm really kind of concerned at the quality of the carburetor that I put in there. You know, I can't imagine what kind of quality you can get out of a $17 kit that includes an entire carburetor, spark plug, fuel line, and fuel filter, but time will tell. We'll just see what happens. Like I said, it got good reviews, and of course I was being a little sarcastic there, but um, it did get some decent reviews. People seem to be fairly satisfied with it, so hopefully that'll be the case with this saw as well. Um, we'll, just, we'll just have to see what happens. But I really appreciate y'all stopping by. I really appreciate y'all watching these videos and welcome to all the new subscribers that have hit that button uh, over the last month or so. The channel has seen a pretty good uptick in subscribers lately and I cannot, I cannot tell y'all how much I appreciate y'all watching these videos and hitting that like button and subscribing. So I will see y'all next time. I've got another saw to fix. It's a Husqvarna 445 X-Torque. We'll see if we can get that one going as well. I've got a similar kit for it and um, we'll see if we can get that one going also, but I will see y'all next time and thank you for watching.